Hey everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about using an airbrush effectively and having a great time doing it. Airbrushes are awesome, and that's what it's all about. And in this episode is all about Citadel Air, part 31, how to use Citadel Air paints and do they differ from any airbrush ready other paints. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about using your airbrush and having a great time doing it. I love my airbrush. I'm gonna keep using it all the time. Hope you do too. Hope you're really enjoying this series. And this episode was asked for by you. You want to know, uh, are there any tips for using the new Citadel Air paints? So I just did a review in my free content and I've been using these paints a lot over the last day or so. And I've been testing them out under various uh, PSIs, airbrushes, distances and stuff, having a lot of fun trying them out. And I can come to a few conclusions. This is what this video is going to be about. This is it. It was asked for by you, you want me to do a video specifically about the Citadel Air Paints since they're new and they're airbrush ready paints. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about those today. Mm -hmm. So today I will be airbrushing the armor on this uh, Dark Angel Space Marine and using of course Caliban Green, a perfect color for Dark Angels, using my Sotar 2020. And so let's talk about these paints a little bit and just any tips I have for using them. First of all, PSI. That's actually one of the first questions I got from this particular warped was PSI. What PSI do I recommend using? High teens. That's what I typically use when I'm airbrushing anyway. And I tried them out and I found that high teens were the, a good zone. You, you don't have to change that many things that you do when using these paints over any other paint. I just find that it saves you a lot of time because you don't have to thin down your paints. They are significantly thinner than normal Citadel paints, and that's great. They're designed for your airbrush. They have great pigmentation. I love them. See my full review in the free content as well. And uh, yeah, so the first thing I was asked was, any airbrushes I recommend? No, actually, I, I tried them out with both my Sotar 2020 and my uh, my Badger 105, Badger Pager 105, and they worked great for both of them. The only thing is cleaning, I find, which I'll talk about that afterwards, but they're, they really do need to be cleaned out thoroughly. They don't clean up as well as I thought an airbrush ready paint would be. So let's go ahead and airbrush this guy. So the first thing we have to do, of course, is connect my 2020. So of course, when using these paints, give them a great shake. I do find that they have a great medium to uh, pigment ratio and they don't separate as much as the other airbrush ready paints. Like Minotaur, you leave Minotaur alone for like a day and they become that. But these I find are actually quite nice. Obviously still give them a great shake because you really want to get those pigments perfectly uniform around the thing. Next, of course, open it up and put the paints in your airbrush. What really sucks about these paint, uh, these paints is the paint pots. I don't like paint pots when I'm airbrushing because why? It just, it wastes paint unnecessarily. First thing, do not, I tried it once, don't dump this paint like that in. Don't do it. You're just asking for a disaster. Don't do it. Your two options are, using a, um, a dropper like this one, but I do find it gunks up, actually, I tried to drop her out a few times and it gunked up pretty quickly. I just prefer using a brush, taking the paints out, putting them in. It's a little wasteful, I agree, which is a downside of these paints. But um, I just find like the, the eyedropper, it d gets dirty and it's really hard to clean it out, I find. So this is one of the few ways where you can just, you know, put some paints in, wash off your brush, and you're good to go. So that's enough paint for sure. That's definitely enough paint in there. A few drops. Oh, that's plenty. Yeah, plenty of paint. So we'll clean off my brush. There we go. So that's it. Simply loading. I recommend a brush. You could use a dropper, but I just straight brush into it. That's one of the downsides of said paints. So now we're good to go. And as I said, I'm gonna use the Sotar 2020. I'm gonna airbrush around 17 or 18 PSI. And I'm gonna talk about, dis I'll show you just distances and stuff. Basically, for as far as spraying distance, keep whatever distance you're comfortable with. I found that these paints are very pigment heavy and not as thin as like Minotaur paints. So you can actually spray from a pretty close distance as I'll show you today. And you won't have to worry about that much spider webbing or anything like that. You'll keep a good solid tone. These have great pigmentations and um, they just, after one coat, you're, I'm quite impressed by the, the result. So let's go ahead and I'll put this on a stand. And as always, I'm going to put on my mask. And I always recommend using masking gloves, even with these airbrush ready paints because uh, you want to protect your lungs, you want to protect your hands. So let's go ahead and do that now. So as you can see here, I just loaded up my 
after loading up my airbrush, I just start airbrushing from all angles with my Sotar 2020. And I, I as you can see in this video, I, I move my airbrush farther and closer to the miniature to show different angles and different um, amounts of separation between the airbrush and the miniature. But the, what I really actually like about these paints my favorite aspect is how they spray they have great coverage they have great pigmentation to them so they tend to go on really solid as you can see there's not a lot of no spider webbing or anything even from this really close um, distance not any spider webbing and it goes on really nice it's a really solid coat and I did the same thing with yellows and with whites and with blacks and I got the same consistency basically the same result every time so they do spray quite nicely so as I said don't be afraid to get close in with the model or spray from your normal distance either one is okay the biggest problem I actually had was cleaning it I had to rinse out my airbrush frequently uh, with these paints I found that they don't clean out of the airbrush as well probably due to the pigmentation uh, it has to be due to the pigments obviously but um, they just they don't clean out of my airbrush very well neither the Sotar 2020 or my Badger Patriot 105 not just this thin nozzled um, or small nozzled airbrush. But as you can see, it goes on really nicely, great coverage. And uh, just keep a, as I said, high teens PSI with a uh, gravity feed airbrush and you're in great shape. Not much, uh, I, I would I would treat these paints as any other paint that I would use that are, are airbrush ready or even ones that I, I thin down myself. So they're, they are great as far as that goes. And when it's done, give it plenty of time to dry. I do find they take a little bit longer to dry than most airbrush ready paints, but that's no problem. Just give it a few extra minutes and they're good to go. So the key as I said, is cleaning out your airbrush frequently and especially these paints. Uh, what I found is that, I don't know if it'll happen in this case, but no, pretty good. Uh, the other paints really did, um, the other paints really did build up. What I found was that when I've used these paints a lot, they, they built up in this area and they dried out. So always, you know, thoroughly clean out your needle, clean up your needle, and clean out your cup of these paints. That's one of the things I recommend the most. I did find they gunked up a little bit more than, as I said, than I expected for a uh, an airbrush ready paint. Definitely, definitely. And here's the final product. Now, the final thing I must recommend is let it dry. Let it dry long. I found that they do take a little bit longer to dry than I thought they would again for an airbrush ready paint. Give it about, I give this model about five minutes to dry. And it's good. It's nice and solid and dry. And that's it. Using Citadel paints, they're just like normal air paints. Um, they, I recommend normal PSI, any distance. In fact, I can even go closer, I found, than with the normal like Minotaire paints. You can actually get closer into the miniature and less spider webbing, which is awesome. Um, Thoroughly clean out your airbrush. They don't clean out as easily, and that's one of the things. And uh, let it dry. It takes a little bit longer to dry than I found like Minotaurs or Vallejo Model Air. But then you get a nice solid coat, and you're in good shape. And that's it for this week's Citadel Air Talk. So that concludes this week's Airbrush 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. So let's sum up, basically. How do these paints differ from normal airbrush ready paints? Uh, first of all, you can't just pour, don't try pouring them out of the pot. That's just gonna create a mess. Use a brush, or if you really want, use an eyedropper. I prefer just a straight brush. It saves time. The dropper gets really dirty quickly in cross-contamination. As far as airbrushes, feel free to use any airbrush. They will spray well in both, you know, fine detail, general detail, and even larger for, for things like uh, terrain. Um, distance, if you want to change, you can even go basically, you can basically spray them as in any normal paint. I found that. Um, what I do like about them is I can even get closer than I normally would, and without a really a fear of spider webbing, they produce a great result. Great stuff there. I really like that. And let them dry thoroughly. Clean it. The biggest, as I said, the biggest thing with this one is clean out your airbrush thoroughly. I rinsed out my airbrush four or five times with water and then cleaner and then wiped off the needle. I do find that they build up along the tip a little bit more than most airbrush ready paints. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Airbrush 101. Uh, I was asked for by you. You said how, in what ways would it differ using Citadel Air from normal paints? And of course, I obliged. So leave comments in the comment section down below what more topics you want me to cover, and I will gladly make more episodes on them for you. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying happy painting.